So welcome all to the uh, Montreal Summit. Unfortunately, I'm staying home, so greetings from Finland. Uh, my name is Tina Bertola, I'm, and I'm chair of the Building Smart Infra Room. I have been now for three years, four year, the fourth year just started. So next slide, please. So shortly in the beginning slides is our room mission and scope. So the mission has to combine, enhance and develop open standards for intelligent data, which enable process and data integration for infrastructure. Uh, the scope is narrow for the information exchange and process standards that supports effective management of constructed built environment and also linking and integrating across BIM and GIS. So in the beginning, the GIS has played also a major role in, in our doings and when we have been looking closely in infra also the activities in, in the OGC side because the infra information is coming from many many different sources and uh, TI is, is one source for, for the information we used in, in everyday planning and construction and maintaining. Next slide please. So shortly in the opening session, uh, John already mentioned that a uh, short sneak peek about, about the room activities updates, both in the steering committee view and the project steering committee view, uh, then a roadmap workshop output, uh, and then question and answering session uh, in, in the end. Next slide. Uh, shortly about the structure of infra room. So we do have the steering committee and on the right hand side uh, upper corner you can see the representatives in the uh, steering committee and as you see there is a, a wide range uh, kind of uh, background for people so coming in different uh, organizations so there are uh, owner organization also uh, universities and uh, construction and consultants so the and also software vendors so i guess that all all of us is needed in order to achieve what what we are aiming for and it's the intelligent data for infrastructure and every player has a own role in this ecosystem we do have the technical leader which is phil jackson and the deputy chair is tim bloom and then the steering uh, project steering committee Chair of the project steering committee is Marek Suhovski. Uh, and Jim Plum is the deputy chair for both for the Infra Room Steering Committee and the Infra Room Project Steering Committee. Uh, in the past years, in the Infra Room, there has been a lot of different uh, projects, and here is just a glimpse of them. So, these projects that you see here, they are related to IFC extension for infrastructure. But among these, we have uh, done uh, technical reports, for example, related to the asset management and the needs for the asset management. Also, the Nudic clients, uh, client organization uh, has made a report uh, that can be also found inside uh, under the Building Smart International Infra Room, a report about the classification and all the aspect of the classification systems and also referring to the existing system and also what might be needed when we are uh, moving slowly to the digital era. And, and they, they are not in this picture, but they play also important role of all what we have done. Uh, about the co color coding, the uh, orange are the one that are part of the IFC 4.3 and also it includes uh, ports and waterways. Uh, color is bit different in ports and waterways, uh, the project, because uh, it's uh, finalized a little bit later than the rest of the rest of the first project. And the tunnel project is currently up and running. And in this summit, we will have a own session for showing the updates for the tunnel project that our tunnel is actually quite close to the end. Next slide, please. And, and here the roles once more, uh, 
the first I went through, but we do have also the roadmap committee inside the steering steering committee. So this uh, small working group that will present uh, after after this few short opening uh, presentation. So they have been working really uh, hard together in order to establish this. Uh, local chapter workshops and uh, and in the virtual summit today we will hear more about the outcome of those sessions and also later today we have the uh, kind of the working session for also roadmap that what what we should do next and what should be the next focus areas so we see that the roadmap work is is really a crucial part of the steering committee work also and it's related a lot of the communications effort we want to have with with the members and also all the infractors across the world uh, that's wanting how to spread spread with the national language about the new functionalities coming along with the IFC 4.3 infrastructure extension. Then uh, Tristan has uh, take responsible for the communication. So all the newsletters we are sending out, they are made by Tristan. So thank you Tristan for that, because the communication is the only way that uh, that we can really ensure that, that uh, we have a multi-channel way to reach out the community community then the liaison with the railway room marion senkwein has been responsible for that but marion is now on maternity leave so we will have a new uh, bsi member maybe in few weeks but uh, that's that's the reason that marion is not not here today with us and then this ISO liaison is Christoph Castan, so he is responsible for the process in the ISO, the uh, this uh, standardization process. Next slide, please. The focus areas between the meetings, what we as a steering committee have, have been focused uh, uh, kind of in, in this six months, month between the uh, virtual summits, uh, one thing is this asset operation handover activity proposals. We have been commenting the proposal and also provide uh, our feedback. And uh, all, all these focus areas are kind of the same that uh, will be presented uh, later on uh, in this summit. Also, the ports and waterways, uh, as you saw in the first slide, it has a slight different color. We have been focused also uh, kind of uh, uh, follow the uh, kind of BSI processes because we've uh, noticed that uh, there was a minor uh, mistake with the final documentation that it was not uh, sent officially to the SCTE uh, according to the BSI process. So we have been taking care that that has been now taking in, in place the action. Also, these ISO process updates uh, has been in our regu under our regular radar. So Christoph has informed and update, give us the latest updates, uh, what's, what's uh, happening in the ISO process uh, at the moment. Also, the liaison updates from the other standardization working groups. So there is a SEN TC442. Uh, which uh, plays also important role and other other groups as well in in uh, together with the OTC that we see important so kind of keeps our heads up that what's happening uh, elsewhere outside the BSI community also this uh, monitoring work for this uh, roadmap so help collecting findings for for those local workshops and also uh, these technical uh, kind of maybe tools, IDS, BSDD and use case management that plays important role in infra also. So we have been uh, also um, maybe keep again our heads up at what's happening there and we'll see those very promising for infra too and we are keen to test them more and yesterday we had a few good presentation related to these topics especially with the BSDD and IDS and those could be a really powerful uh, tool for, for us in the near future. Next slide, please. 
and uh, th this is shortly uh, beginning for the asset operation uh, facility management handover when we started to discuss this uh, bit uh, together with the building room so this was kind of the first drafts drafts of the project and this is just an activity proposal but uh, kind of uh, next slide please but it's it's kind of a uh, feedback from the conversation there was a lot of uh, commenting inside the uh, steering committee we provide uh, improvement to the activity proposal and also we uh, give our kind of advice for, for infrastructure, what especially is important for us here is just collecting a few few comments from all the conversation that we had around the uh, activity proposal. So, for example, the uh, need for wider view of handover for infrastructure is referred but not fully explained. Location requirements, they are very important for the infrastructure and we, we saw that they, they need to highlight it more in the activity proposal and, and hopefully uh, later on today uh, asset, asset management uh, handover sessions. And uh, in the infra domain, the owner in the end is, is almost always a public administration, so take this into account. And also, it for for handover in infra, it's it's not about the products and collecting the design data. It's also how to specify and collect additional data uh, plays a very important role. And uh, how we can utilize what is already done. And now I refer to those, for example, technical reports that we have produced for for asset management, for example. So lessons to be learned from those reports. And uh, and uh, today later we will have the, the sessions uh, actually two sessions uh, uh, for for this topic. So first session is is more more to introduce that what's already have have been done and how this related to the other activities inside the BSI, like also the building smart data dictionary and IDS IDS topic and then then the last session for today is is the workshop session related to the asset operation handover next slide please and then shortly about the agenda so so the uh, next session after the opening will be the panel session with owner of commitment to use IFC 4.3 and actually uh, all these uh, kind of how our agenda looks in this summit related to our activities what we have been focused on as a steering committee so then we have this two part for this asset operation handover and it's together with a building room so this is I, I guess uh, I might be wrong, but maybe the first time that we have uh, this close collaboration uh, between infra room and building room. So this is re really a good opportunity for us to learn from each other. Uh, then tomorrow, the first session in the morning, your time, evening, my time, is the chairman update on infra activities. So it's really good to have an uh, overview of what's happening uh, in, in other countries too. So it's it's an also a very very uh, good approach to a different perspective of what what happening in germany then the sixth session so the second session tomorrow morning is the uh, together with the railway room so so we have been working closely with the railway room with the ifc 4.3 so implementing and the uh, changes what's coming business cases project and validation services uh, then we have the uh, session number seven so it's the technical details of the ifc tunnel so the word tunnel is missing i don't know why what happens to the slide when i down upload them to the system but it's it's uh, dedicated to the tunnel so it's it's the latest progress in the in the tunnel uh, project and then the last session in infra room is the roadmap update so the tunnel went there sorry so update extension so what what needs to update in in our roadmap so so kind of all these uh, topics in our agenda are related uh, closely to those activities what we as a steering committee have, have had uh, between uh, the two summits next slide 
Uh, and then uh, showed advertisement uh, in Rabim Open in Tampere uh, in the beginning of next year. So the you can next slide, please. So the program will be available in early November, and the early bird tickets are available uh, almost till the end of November. And and there is a direct link where you can get more information in the event but it it's it has been now held held uh, for time last time was this in the beginning of this year in Lyon France together with the building smart France so it's a really good opportunity to see the latest achievement within the infra in construction field uh, or infra industry related to the digitalization not only BIM, but, but digitalization team as a whole. And then I guess that last next slide is the last one. Yes, so thank you. Thank you all, and uh, I, I wish you all a very, very good uh, summit, especially those who are on site uh, on the live event, but also for those who are just joining here virtually like like myself thank you uh, welcome everybody um in the room uh, my name is marek sohotsky as tina mentioned and i'm just going to uh, add to the content that tina's already presented around uh the projects that we've been undertaking as part of the infrastructure and railway extensions um, a really important thing to emphasize is the global participation that has led to the development of these new uh, extensions uh, and also the very strong commitment, especially on the rail side, from owners, which is very important because if we can create demand for uh, structured data handover um, in, into the operational phase of our uh, infrastructure projects, then we have confidence that the data will be used not just during the capital phase, but then for the much longer term into uh, the operations of our infrastructure assets. And, and again, it's very heartening that we have got such a global commitment, uh, meaning that we haven't developed these in, in kind of small isolated units. They've actually been uh, delivered using consensus views. And, and I won't say for one second that these have been easy conversations, particularly at the technical level, um, but being able to identify what constitutes good definitions of infrastructure, hierarchies, uh, assets and attribution means that we can all be quite confident that the solution is um, as practical as, uh, and appropriate as possible. Uh, moving forward then, let's have a look at some of these projects. Some are, are currently in progress. Uh, apologies a bit about the formatting, but um, this is uh, model view definitions for infrastructure and rail. This is the most important project currently in flight. Um, there are 13 different uh, exchanges that are in scope, which uh, will explain why the project has taken quite a long time. And this, you know, I, I, dare I say, um, taken more, you know, six months longer than we'd hoped. But it's also a sign of the investment of effort and uh, trying to get to the right answers for import and export against the different uh, exchanges that you can see on the right hand side. Uh, that means that we want to make sure that it's done right rather than releasing something early. Um, these exchanges are, are necessary uh, to um, provide support for, uh, as I say, import and export, both for infrastructure shown in the, like, the blue circle and, and rail in the right-hand circle. Um, there's commonality across them, but the way alignments are treated are slightly different for infrastructure and rail, and then concepts such as CANT don't mean anything to um, uh, highways people. So uh, the work is progressing. It's at a fairly mature state. Um, I've included uh, some links there if you want to get to the documentation, but all of this will be uh, more detailed and clarified at the uh, Infra Room 6, Railway Room 6 joint session tomorrow. Um, and if you are interested, I think it's, it's probably gonna be one of the most important sessions to go to and perhaps provide some feedback if you can attend this. Um, so let's look at some ongoing and future work beyond the MVD work, which is what, so the other thing I, I had to mention about the MVD work is it, it's needed to be, uh, to enable certification of software. So if we have uh, some of those MVDs available to 
certify that we can export and we can import against uh, a defined exchange, then we know that we have confidence that the software is doing what's expected as well. So let's look at some ongoing and future work. I'm, I'm not going to steal the thunder from my colleague Christophe Castan, who will speak um, at length on this uh, tomorrow in Inforum 6. Um, but again, this is a very important uh, phase of activity for us because uh, if we get through the ISO certification, so effectively uh, ISO 16739 will be version three, um, the uh, specifiers, owners, uh, people preparing contracts can literally put uh, IFC um, 4.3 according to ISO 16739 2023 into contracts and we know what we are contracting against. So data can be contracted to a known standard. So this is a very important uh, piece of work and as as was mentioned to those who watched the uh, sessions yesterday uh, we are on track to have this approved for early 2023. Uh, next project is uh, definitely in progress IFC tunnel uh, this will lead to uh, a proposed uh, up, uh, upgrade to IFC 4.4 which will include tunnel extensions and some other sort of minor tweaks to the, the data schema um, it's uh, been run very effectively and the session will be fully clarified again tomorrow in Infra Room 7. Um, so if you are interested, please do attend. And there are still opportunities to participate in testing the developed schema work um, using uh, available software or, of course, um, test software. So uh, I do encourage people to attend Infra Room 7 tomorrow uh, and find out more about this project, which hopefully will deliver late this year or very early next year. Um, Tina's already mentioned the asset operations handover work. Uh, as an infra room, we are extremely interested in this because uh, asset operations is critical to infrastructure. You know, we, we manage and maintain our assets for um, not just decades, but even centuries in some cases. And if we can improve how we receive data into the operational phase of assets, um, then the benefit will, will come back to all of us as taxpayers because we pay our taxes to maintain our infrastructure. And let's let's say if we can reduce the cost in use, then clearly that's a benefit. And, and so as an infrastructure room, we are very focused on uh, being active in this. Um, and we, as Tina said, have already provided some feedback to the uh, draft proposals. Uh, again, this is being covered in the sessions this afternoon uh, here in Montreal. Uh, uh, joint, joint session uh, three for infra room and building room and four. Um, myself and others will be participating in that. And again, those here, who are here in the room, please do attend. I think it's quite uh, interesting. It'd be good to get your uh, in, input to what's being discussed. Um, and this will be tracked as part of the infra room project steering committee moving forward. Um, these are now just a, a last couple I'm gonna share are some projects that are effectively on hold. Um, we had a proposal for landscaping and urban planning back in 2020. Uh, this has got some proposed work packages, as you can see there. Uh, as an infrastructure uh, steering committee and project steering committee, we, we consider this to be appropriate work, but we do need funding and experts to lead the initiative. Uh, and so a bit of a call out to you here in the room and online to see if you are interested in this. And of course, if you can put your hands in your pockets to kind of help fund this work because it does need um, uh, a degree of uh, sponsorship as well as uh, expert in participation. Uh, and then uh, another project is we've been given a proposal for ports and waterways phase two extensions uh, with the uh, items uh, identified there on screen. Um, again, this is a really uh, uh, potentially valuable uh, set of uh, enhancements to IFC for infrastructure. Um, that will be again usable by uh, owner operators in the uh, river management, coastal management uh, and canal systems. Um, but once again, we do need uh, sponsorship and expert participation. So the project is on hold. Um, unfortunately, the phase one uh, uh, expert lead for ports and waterways has uh, had a role change within the uh, academic position at the University of Cardiff. And, and so has uh, time constraints. So we would also be looking to find one or more project leads with the correct um, understanding of IFC as well as uh, the, the domain to uh, lead this, but most importantly, sponsorship. So if you are interested and you do operate in the, the ports and 
uh, marine uh, side, then uh, this, uh, this project is already very well described and documented and, and kind of ready to go. And I think with that, I'm pleased to say that I can hand over to my colleague, Jim Shortley, uh, once we uh, do the uh, exchange of kits and, and uh, uh, microphones. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Marek. Um, thanks for giving us an overview on the project. I'm going to invite Jim to plug in and join me to give us um, some feedback on the Infrastructure Room Roadmap Workshops. Uh, well, thank you very much. Make it myself a bit more centered. Yeah. Um, thank you. So I, I, I have the um, the task um, from the Infra Room Steering Committee to guide. I'm not going to say the word lead, but to guide the work on um, developing our strategic roadmap going forward. And we're currently thinking forward as far as. 2027, so we're thinking five years forward. And what we've done is um, uh, establish a number of um, chapter led workshops to tease out um, the concerns that our community, our wider community, has around infrastructure and where we should go next. So let's go forward. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do a quick um, roadmap recap. Um, I'll talk a bit about the activity streams that we've identified going forward. Thank you, that's much easier, thank you. Um, uh, I'll talk a bit about the chapter workshops that have run and the outcomes of those. We then went through a process of consolidating those outcomes into a set of issues that um, um, uh, are proposed to be addressed uh, under the activity streams that we've identified and then um, uh, we'll have some discussion about how those might fit into the preliminary roadmap and then talk about next steps. Thank you. So this is the roadmap we had previously, the most recent sort of version from spanning from 2019 through to 2022. And we, we identified a number of streams moving across and we had a starting point and a focused um, future state. And next slide. And we um, identified these as the major streams of work to be to be undertaken. So, um, completing and deploying ongoing projects, um, identifying future requirements, white papers, object type libraries, and liaison with SEN and OGC and and others, uh, as, as also and also industry communications. So that's where we sort of sit at the moment, as it were. Next slide. <laughs> This is the, we, we've sort of reframed that now. And so we've um, got basically the same roadmap streams that were um, identified. And this slide attempts to show through 2023 up to 2027, as I say, how those, how we think those streams might sort of change in weight over time. This is purely speculative. We don't really know, but it gives us a, a starting point. So we're going to, uh, continue to um, focus on consolidation industry training. And in fact, one of the key outcomes of the workshop so far has been that we really should focus on that most strongly over the next um, um, 12 months and perhaps a little bit beyond. And so we've emphasized that slightly up in the left hand corner there. Um, use cases are very important and we'll, uh, we'll talk more about those at the moment. Uh, there may there will inevitably be further infra extension projects that uh, will pop up. And we've already identified some that uh, still need funding, so are on hold, but there may be other things that we need to investigate. Um, testing and piloting is really important over the next uh, few years, several years, as we try and come to terms with uh, how uh, the implementation and use of the extension, IC 4.3 infra extensions, how that's actually applied in industry and the lessons learned from that. So we're, we don't have any specific activities identified there at the moment, but we see that that's going to be um, an ongoing work driven by uh, yourselves, by industry. Ontologies and the use of the BSDD um, 
it continues to be an important area, and so we assume that we'll be working in those areas. It's going to be important that we continue to um, be cognizant of and support the ongoing technical development work within the IFC, the Building Smart Community more widely, and so we've got a stream for that. Uh, importantly, we've, we've uh, coming out of the workshops, we've identified several uh, topics, possible topics for white papers, and so that's a, an activity which will be a stream that will go, go forward. And the white papers, of course, exploring ideas and concepts and understanding how we might apply those going forward. And, uh, and then, of course, there's still the liaisons with the other BSI rooms, OGC, ISO, SEN, and so on. So liaisons with our wider community and, of course, infra-room community outreach. So there, all those streams sit there. Thanks. I think I should be doing that. Uh, it's important, though, to say at this point that this is not a presentation of an agreed infra-room strategic roadmap. Um, all I'm really doing here is describing the process that we've been following to date to, as it were, collect data, collect ideas, and um, uh, and they those ideas are meant to prompt further discussion. It'll be our role um, as a infra steering committee to um, develop a roadmap from this input. So please, if you see things here, don't uh, don't interpret them as being set in stone they're simply the ideas that have been thrown at us and i'm reporting them now in order to promote um, further discussion and input and in fact that's why we're having two workshops on this this is my opportunity to or our opportunity i really should say to present what we've gathered so far as ideas on uh, tomorrow afternoon is an opportunity for us to have a much more uh, free-ranging discussion about uh, what does all this mean? What have we overlooked? Um, are there and to prioritise some of these things? So I want to make that point very clearly. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we've had five chapter workshops so far. The first one um, was actually a rail workshop in Italy back in July last year, um, and they, they gave us. Uh, the output for their workshops, so that was a good sort of platform to, to commence with. Um, in November last year, there was a, germ, a workshop in Germany, uh, then in January this year, Finland, in August this year, Australasia, and in September, uh, Sweden. So we've had those five workshops, so what I'm reporting today is simply the outcomes of those workshops, the ideas that were put forward and uh, therefore um, available to us or suggestions next so what i'm going to do is go through each of those wor wor uh, workshops very quickly and um, um, uh, and explain how they were organized and what the sort of typical outcomes were from those workshops so this is kind of you like the raw data and we're going to go through this fairly quickly you will find that these slides are packed full with detail and the intention is to make this slide set available to you as early as possible. So John is going to share a link to this document in the chat at some point. I am, yeah. When you have an opportunity. <laughs> um, and um, so that you can read the detail. So the the one in Italy was a, um, um, uh, just worked through with a group of people, worked through uh, these issues. Next. Thank you. If I try and do it, I'll probably stuff it up. Uh, so this is uh, on the left. There is a summary of the workshop. So they talked about BIM maturity levels. They talked about tools that are required, and they talked about regulations and standards and the details there. What we pulled out of that on the right-hand side are a summary of the conclusions, and we arranged them under those streams. So uh, certainly in that workshop, they talked about IFC training under. Um, consolidation. They talked about collaboration and contract um, issues. Under use cases, they saw maintenance as being a major use case. Under extension projects, they talked about interoperability uh, through the CDE uh, platforms. 
parametric design in IFC and national databases for of parametric rules. They talked about um, design to design as an issue, uh, which we've put under the general um, IFC tech support area. Uh, they talked about the need for approve, uh, white papers on approval phase, and they talked about pilot projects. So that's the kind of that's a good example of the way in which we've structured this um, incoming information. So we've got the raw data on the left hand side and the outcomes on the right hand side. Next. Uh, Germany uh, also had some a similar thing, so they uh, they ran their um, workshop uh, under with three groups on working on three topics. Uh, one participant uh, group presented the results, and so they ran a plenary sort of session. Uh, this was a quite a lengthy thing; it was an all-day workshop, um, and the participants were people like owners, designers, construction companies, software vendors, and so on. You can see the list there. So they had quite a uh, a high level of engagement. Next. Um, and they, they summarised the, the, the key points under these three, uh, four headings, in fact, IFC, classes and characteristics, white papers and communication, and they categorised them as either a rose, a good idea, um, a thorn, an issue, a, a challenge, and a bud, which is a, an emerging concept. That's how they structured their information. So you realize that each of these workshops have been very individualized in the way they've run. Next. Keeping you busy. Uh, so again, the summary here, um, you can't read the detail on the left, but you're welcome to have a look at it later. It's very small print. But um, again, there's a summary of conclusions. I'm not going to work all my way all the way through them, but um, you can see that again, we've grouped them under consolidation and digital training, use case ideas, IFC technical development support, and white paper. So this is just the raw data that came through. And as I say, these are will be available to you uh, on the link in chat. So we encourage you to read the detail as much as you, you wish going forward. Next. Uh, Finland, similar sort of pattern. Um, it was a, the agendas on the screen there. They had um, about 30 participants and they had working groups that dealt with specific issues and then out of that, using Miro board as a, as a platform for collecting ideas, they drew ideas out. Next. And so again, the summaries of the observations in that workshop are on the left there and the um, uh, so the raw data on the right is the conclusions that uh, have been grouped under the streams. And so the first one is actually, uh, there was a lot of discussion in that workshop around InfraModel um, and um, how, which, which is used extensively in Finland uh, as a platform and how that might be impacted, the use of that might be impacted. And we see that as really a national issue rather than an issue for us. They did have some discussions on use cases, um, particularly viewing the whole process of data tra transfer. We'll come back to that later and uh, some ideas around white papers. Next. Uh, this is Australasia, so this is my home turf. Um, we had a, um, a, a, we opted to have a very short and sharp two hour virtual workshop. Um, we had an attendance of around about 34 people, um, um, of whom we found a lot of people just sort of were sitting there mute. Um, there are about 12 or 13 um, active contributors. Um, we had some presentations at the beginning and we uh, used Miro board to um, uh, record some discussion. Uh, all of you have access to all of that um, so that uh, there are links on this that you can go to if you want to look at the detail, but um, um, uh, it's all there. Thanks. Next. So in the um, coming out of that, again, I've summarized the observations from the workshop on the left hand side there, and there's a bit of detail in that. And on the right, uh, again, we had conclusions around um, industry training and consolidation, and the need to develop a guideline document was specifically mentioned. Uh, some use cases were raised. Um, IFC technical development support, there was actually um, quite a bit of um, discussion around uh, requested actions, you might say, relating to IOC 4, and then in fact listed on the right-hand side. 
on the left hand side of the slide I didn't have space to fit them but they're specific details that um, may or may not need to be pursued uh, there, again there were suggestions for white papers and uh, there's also um, some concerns about community outreach next uh, and finally, the Swedish workshop, um, similar sort of pattern. They had a, um, uh, a an afternoon workshop. Um, they had um, 30 participants and uh, they used Miro board um, to identify issues going forward. Next. And the same sort of thing, a summary on the left-hand side and key ideas that came out of the workshop on the, the right. So again, they, they, they had things around consolidation, um, ideas for infra extension projects, white papers, and outreach. Thanks. So what we did then, then did was drop all of those ideas onto our stream diagram, and that just becomes a bit chaotic, but it um, just shows the amount of, I think the really the story this slide show, gives us is that there's uh, lots of things that we might pursue going forward. Uh, these are not attempted to be placed in any chronological order. They're simply crammed onto the diagram in their appropriate streams. Next. So what do we do with all that information? This is the process we followed. We developed a um, summary of the conclusions and the, the screenshot on the right there shows what it kind of looks like. Um, so all of the workshop outcomes were collected into a single working document. We arranged them under stream headings. The editorial group then consolidated those into a set of activities under each stream. So in the document there, the blue dot points at the top, the green is the raw data. Um, the activity list for each stream is comprehensive at this stage and during, as we go forward, we need to um, um, prioritise some of those ideas, eliminate those that uh, we don't think we need to handle or should be handled in a different way. And so our next step, and this is where the rubber hits the road for you guys, um, we're having a session tomorrow, in the last session tomorrow, um, which we see as an opportunity to get feedback and further input on the outcomes of this. Um, there'll be um, further chapter workshops. So I know the US are, are, are very actively engaged in launching a workshop as soon as possible. They're aiming for before Thanksgiving. Uh, for that workshop, and UK and Ireland are, are, are planning a workshop, and we encourage others to um, think about whether the, their chapters could have a workshop to add more meat to these this planning. And then early next year, our task will be to adopt and to implement that. In other words, to convert these ideas into an, a, a workshop, into a roadmap that actually has milestones and has some clear deliverables. I'm going to go through them now, and again, this could slip into a very long discussion, um, a long presentation, and we, well, we still have half an hour, but I don't want to bore you. Um, but the detail is here, and so this is really a summary of the um, outcomes that are under each stream, and our intention is to use this as the basis for a workshop session tomorrow afternoon, as I'm saying. So. We'll have a mirror board set up, we'll have these slides up on the screen, and we'll be asking uh, participants, both uh, real in-person participants as well as um, virtual participants, to um, prioritise these, to critique them. They'll be open for some verbal discussion as appropriate, and, um, and we'll be asking you to um, um, add to or subtract from these lists. So this is, as I say, just the, the data as we've collated it so far, and we hope that it sort of gives us a, a foundation for going forward. Um, so one of the key things that came out was the, uh, the need for um, uh, better information uh, for industry, industry training, you might call it, or industry education, um, to consolidate what we already have, that we shouldn't rush in to doing more and more work on extensions to RC at this stage, we need to consolidate what we have at the moment. That was an overriding message that came out of um, most of the workshops. Uh, and so uh, 
these are some of the points that were um, raised as, as potential needs. And I guess the most important one is the, the first one, an overview of RFC 4.3 concepts for end users. We need to have a guideline document. We need to develop something which we can give out to industry and help people to understand uh, where this sits. And I won't go through all of these ideas, but there are things like um, you know, the need to, you know, what's, what's the IFC's place within the standards ecosystem? Where does it fit? Um, and in fact, that was a, a fairly a localized uh, need by one of, in, within one of the workshops, but it probably is also a, a, a general need. Uh, contractual guidelines. How do, we, how do we advise clients to develop their contracts around this new standard? Uh, managing IFC file size was a, a detailed issue that uh, infrastructure projects tend to explode in the size of the files. Do we need to come up with strategies for managing that? Uh, um, this is related to simplified representation of node objects was a very specific thing that came up, and so the list goes on. Some of these are uh, more significant than others. This list is purely what came out of the workshop and is in no order at the moment, but we do need to prioritize some of these things. Um, I think it's worth noting that the role of the data dictionary is an important one that came forward as, as one year. We need to understand how we can use that within the infrastructure domain and also the application of IDS and UCM uh, system in um, infrastructure works. Next. Um, then the second stream was use cases. There were three major use cases that were discussed that came out, we thought. One was the, a use case around as a sort of a general generic overview of project processes in infrastructure to try and get a, uh, uh, establish a, an understanding of the, the bigger picture where small specific use cases can sort of flow out of that. So that was seen as one possible um, activity. Um, there's also the um, one that we've already talked about, the data requirements for infra operations that came up and uh, we see that as being input into the uh, operation, asset operations handover framework activity. Next. And the other use case that never came up was support for BIM and GIS integration. And again, um, that's an issue already being addressed by BSI. It's, we've already seen some presentations that have demonstrated that work, uh, that possibility and how that might work, but it's an ongoing need that we need to pursue. Uh, the other one was infra extension projects. Again, I didn't, we didn't, um, no, no, no specific projects actually came up under this heading. Um, so all I've done here is list the ones that we've already talked about. So if we skip over this slide, this is really repeat of what Marek has already said. Um, under IFC tech development support, um, the issues that rose were things like managing software inconsistencies. You know, the fact that uh, different software tools don't export IFC in a consistent way relative to each other. And so there's, this creates confusion and there's a need to um, mitigate the, the challenges associated with the implementation of IFC within software. Another one was um, to standardize validation processes. How do we, we need tool sets that allow us to actually validate the um, IFC data sets that we work with. And again, that's an issue that's being, has already been discussed at this summit and is already being discussed within um, the ISD technical room. And so we need to support that. The other big one is design to design support. And, and that's one that um, everyone kind of raises all the time. Um, I'm not sure we quite understand exactly what we mean by that always, but uh, there is a need to explore that and to support um, thinking toward design to design. Next. Then we have the white papers, and there was there's quite a long list of white papers that uh, were suggested, and um, some of these are very specific, some are, are more obviously general and useful. So the first two on this slide are um, to do with the white paper, so we need to do some focused work on really understanding um, how the data dictionary needs to be used and can be used within infrastructure projects, and um, um, we need to support that. That's probably an important one, but that's 
my personal view, I, sh I shouldn't actually impose um, judgments on this because these are our ideas and we have to evaluate them. The next one was the, again, the application of IDS and the UCM service tool uh, for infrastructure works, how we apply those. Next. Um, some of the more specific um, white papers. Um, one was handling parametric processes in IFC. And so um, often software tools have proprietary ways of creating geometry and this ex ex you know, creates challenges. So that might be a topic to be explored. Contractual guidelines, giving guidance insight on how contractual issues can be managed from an information management perspective. Another one that came up, thanks, next. Um, communication channels. Um, Uh, transparent communication channels and methods embedded in uh, in an improved information management approach would help users to find their way more quickly. So we need to clarify how we communicate within the industry. Uh, another one was around systems models. The systems, um, the concept of a system uh, in IFC is um, is there, but it, we don't always. Um, think about how we might use it. And so there are some very specific uh, comments around uh, you know, operational dependencies. How can we support those within a, um, um, a system model of an infrastructure? Um, there was also mention of the facility-wide topological models of infrastructure networks. Uh, how do we represent those? And should we represent that at that sort of high level? And um, um, there's also a very specific one about uh, station equalities because with uh, anyone involved in road design knows that uh, what you plan doesn't or design doesn't uh, match reality. We're always realigning things and station points can change very quickly. You need to be able to manage that. Another very specific one was managing survey data in IFC, um, pointing out that uh, survey work is generally only 2D, not 3D, and yet IFC wants it to be 3D. I don't know how big an issue that is, but um, it was raised. Um, probably a, a, a big one is defining spatial structures for infrastructure works. We need to come to terms with how we now, we have now have a defined conceptual model for managing spatial structure, but we uh, there's been not a lot of debate yet or discussion about or agreement yet about how to um, apply that and so that needs to be understood. Next. Uh, managing on-site design changes uh, unlike building construction, um, linear infrastructure, um, once, it's, you know, once it's being de delivered um, changes continually and uh, just uh, the notion of being able to manage that uh, in, a, in an effective way for infrastructure projects. It's one of the issues that was raised. And the, the next one is object type libraries for infrastructure. Uh, we need to start thinking about how we can develop that resource for our industry. Next. Well, the formatting is sort of a bit confused here, but anyway. Um, uh, so automation of the construction uh, infrastructure sector. So there's a, um, a just a, a general sort of white paper need for a white paper that deals with um, um, the whole impact of automation on our sector sectors. Thanks. And finally, under the topic the stream infra, infra room community outreach, there were um, a suggestion that we should submit pilot projects for BSI awards probably a given, I suspect. And uh, another idea that came up in a couple of places was uh, infra room hosting a repository for exemplar projects. So we have a single place where people can go and, and actually look at uh, good examples um, that uh, can be used as uh, reference projects. So those are the ideas that came out. Uh, we map those onto the uh, stream diagram and uh, suggesting or implying some kind of sequence. 
Um, but uh, again, I emphasize these are simply ideas at this stage. We There's a lot of good stuff there. There's also a lot of detail there, which may be less urgent. Um, what we want to do now is, is uh, with more, with your help, uh, identify things that are, are not, we haven't yet covered and helping us to prioritize this so that we can then start to think about how to coordinate this and develop it into a roadmap. Next. So this is the final slide and we're 15 minutes early, which is good. There's opportunity for a Q&A if we need. Um, but just to re, uh, reinforce, so we have a session tomorrow, IR8, in the afternoon. Um, we want to use that as an opportunity to prioritise and to challenge these ideas put forward so far. So we want to run it based on Miro board. Uh, for those who are in the room in person, we encourage you to um, bring your laptop with you so that you can connect to the Miro board and interact in the same way that the folk who are attending virtually interact so that we use the Miro board as a as a place, a means of um, uh, prioritizing and challenging and commenting on the ideas that are there at the moment and um, um, certainly adding to it, uh, telling, you know, giving anything that you think is missing, anything that you think we should be thinking about more strongly. Uh, as I said earlier, we are there will be further chapter workshops that are already in uh, the process of being planned, but we encourage any chapter um, or any industry group for that matter to um, run a workshop. We can help you with organizing that and give you sort of the, the content material that you need to, to plan it. Uh, as you saw, the workshops have been run in a very, very different way. And so there's no rules about how you run the workshop. But um, uh, uh, the more input we get, the better, because we want the whole community to uh, drive this process. And then it'll be back into our hands to develop uh, that around um, a proper roadmap with milestones planned for the next five years. And we then plan to adopt and implement from the beginning of next year. So any questions, discussion, uh, my contact detail is there. Uh, as, a, as a point of contact for this work, but uh, of course anyone from the Infra Room Steering Committee can uh, respond to questions. Thank you very much. Um, that's great. Thank you, Jim. Um, I'll, I'll lead in and uh, hopefully everyone will be here able to hear you. Um, yeah, thanks to Tina, Marit and Jim for presenting today. We have a few minutes, 10 minutes or so left at the end of this Infrastructure Room Session 1. Um, as Jim was saying, there will be a return to the roadmap workshop information that Jim just presented tomorrow afternoon when you'll have the opportunity to, um, to participate in a workshop and the prioritization of some of those work streams that have been suggested. Uh, but I was wondering if there's any thoughts or comments or questions that anyone wishes to raise now with regards to the roadmap, um, the projects, or, or anything else that's happening within uh, infrastructure room. Yes, one recommendation and one remark about uh, about your presentation, Jim. Uh, first of all, I resist and we have to use the opportunity of this summit uh, to organize a call, uh, a meeting with the mind representative. Because I mean, you have a large community working in France about that on IC and so on. Uh, I think we can have then, then these people involved in the uh, roadmap perspective because they are, we are thinking today how to continue mine for the next uh, for the next uh, next year coming with some ideas and so on. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be great to have them involved because uh, the, they are very much involved in the IC de deployment. So it could be useful for the for the process. Second thing, uh, it's a remark like that I mean when you are speaking about contractual documentation and so on. I think the way to job for that is big execution plan. And the idea is, could be the following one, how to update the so we can uh, um, make sure yeah, yeah, as we move forward into the roadmap development phase that we get it right. 
So um, what we've done on the Miro board, which is now on display, is to have each of these slides made, um, you know, having their own place. And the plan will be that uh, uh, we invite the participants to grab a a, um, a note, a, a virtual post-it note, yeah. a virtual post-it note, and um, place some votes against the different streams um, and ideas that we have within the streams. This has been sorted by stream now, um, Jim. If you want it, yeah. so as you can probably see. So we have, for instance, the use cases that came out from the the workshops, which people will be able to um, place prioritization against on tomorrow, um, and also to suggest um, any ideas that may be missing, mm -hmm. any additional ideas. Yeah. So th this will replace the old fashioned way of doing it, just having things up on the wall that uh, and gives us a permanent record. Just while we're finding that other question, um, we're, we're not going to release access to the um, Miro board until tomorrow afternoon. Um, everyone will get an invitation to it, and uh, uh, you can just sign in yourself. Um, okay, thanks, Jim. Thanks, thanks for the question, Christoph. Um, there doesn't appear to be any more questions um, on online, so I would suggest that we finish five minutes early or so. Uh, I think you'll find us some coffee just outside the room and down the first set of steps, uh, and we'll be starting again in here at um, 11 a.m. Um, when uh, Marek uh, will be hosting a panel session um, for um, owners um on their thoughts comments and how they intend to use ifc 4.3 in the infrastructure space thank you <laughs>